You asked for it. You got it. We are giving you our first auto museum tour. It may be the first of many. Or the last one you <laughs> ever see. The Dahl Automotive Museum is located in La Crosse, Wisconsin, inside the Dahl car dealership, which began selling cars way back in 1911. I'm standing next to a 1911 Model T. It's not the first year for the Model T, but it's the year that this dealership went into business. One of the things that I've often heard when people talk about who built the first car in the United States, many people will say Ford. He didn't, but he certainly put America on wheels. But there were many car manufacturers in business before Ford started. But let's talk about the Model T. This car got the nickname Mother-in-Law Roadster because of this seat. They called these things mother-in-law seats. Make what you will of that. It was a four-cylinder water-cooled flathead engine, made 20 horsepower. Let's talk about the, how you would drive this thing. It is, of course, uh, a crank start. You would grab that handle and bring it up to about uh, the nine o'clock position and raise it up real quickly. That is after you've choked it. And here, this wire sticking out of the grill here is the choke. You would actually rotate it three or four times as you're pulling the choke to get fuel into the carburetor. Then you'd go around and you'd move the lever to the, to the run position and then you'd come back and, and give it a one, hopefully one good pull and it would start. There's a spark advance here and that's this lever on the left side of the steering column. The other lever on the other side of the steering column is the throttle. And it works just like a throttle would. Idle is at the top. Full throttle is the bottom. Then you've got your pedals. It's got three pedals. And as I already said, the throttle's up here. So what do you think that right pedal is on the floor? It's the brake. The middle pedal is for reverse. The left pedal, they called it the clutch, but it's really not uh, a clutch in the, in the kind of, in the sense that we think of a clutch today. The emergency brake handle is here, but the, the brake, the, the right pedal that I talked about, it didn't have brakes at the wheels that you controlled by that brake pedal. What that brake pedal controlled was a band that went around the hub at the rear of the transmission. So you're just stopping the drive shaft, which stops the car from rolling. Uh, in a panic stop, you would, you would yank the emergency brake because there is, mechanical, there is a mechanical brake system on the rear wheels but that's, like I said, the emergency brake. This car would do 30 miles an hour, maybe 35, which was, in 1911, you gotta remember, there were still a lot of horse and buggies out there, and they would only do five miles an hour, maybe six or seven. So 30 miles an hour was quite a bit faster than that. Well, this car definitely brings some memories back for me. My first car was a 71 Mustang, a Mach 1. This is, happens to be a 73 and a convertible, but mine was the same color and Mustangs were a big deal. There was always a conversation of, if you had a Mustang, did you have a 351 Cleveland or did you have a 351 Windsor? And I had the Cleveland, which was considered a better engine. And in fact, I used to race my Mustang and uh, <laughs> my mom never knew. <laughs> Okay, so this is a 1955 Ford Crown Victoria glass top. They didn't build a lot of the glass top models. What I mean by glass top is that the, the front half of the, of the top of the car is plexiglass. Now on a hot day, of course, you would bake, and I think that's probably why it wasn't real popular. But there was a piece that you could snap on that would block the sun. One of the things I always liked about the 55 and 56 Fords is that they brought the body side molding. It's just a, it was just a styling cue, but I, it's, it, I can't think of any other car, at least from the 50s, where they did this. But they'd take the body side molding, and, it, and it's as coming along the side of the car, as the name implies, and then they wrap it up onto the top of the fender, which I just... I just love this treatment. The car has a two, 272 cubic inch Ford V8. We called it the Y block. 272, 292, and 312 were the three cubic inch displacements that, that I'm 
very familiar with. I, I grew up in an auto repair shop that my dad owned, and I spent many an hour working on these, these Y blocks. This car is also equipped with, the, uh, uh, with a Continental kit. Here's a beautifully restored 1955 T-Bird, which was the first year for the model. This is a 1905 Cadillac, and most of the cars in this museum are Ford, not all of them, but most, and that fits because the dealer started out as a Ford dealer. But there is actually a link between Cadillac and Ford. So there are two stories about how this transpired, how the Henry Ford Company became Cadillac. The one I buy into it has to do with the two investors that bankrolled Ford. They brought Henry Leland in to, as a consultant because Ford was not getting a car ready for production fast enough. By doing this, it irked Ford to the point that he left the company. And that company was reorganized and became known as Cadillac. This was in 1902 and he a year later uh, formed the Ford Motor Company that we all know today. Well, Liz showed you her first car, the, uh, the 73, but she had a 71 Mustang. Uh, this was my first car. I had, in high school, I had a, a 40 Ford Coupe. This is a 39, but basically the same car with slightly different taillights and a slightly different grille. Now, mine had a completely different engine and transmission. I had a Chrysler Hemi in mine. It was an early Hemi, so it wasn't the 426. It was a 331 Hemi out of a early Chrysler. And it was mated to the old top loader three-speed uh, transmission that, that they put in the 40 Ford. And I got really good at rebuilding those transmissions because I would shear all the teeth off of first gear when I was out showing off in it and doing burnouts. Well, the car museum was not as boring as I thought it would be. <laughs> I mean, I love just, you know, being reminded about my Mustang, my first car. Boy, that car was fast. Yeah, first car is a very meaningful thing to most of us. And, and as I said, mine was that 40 Ford uh, coupe. Was it a chick magnet, <laughs> your car, was it? <laughs> it? Yeah, it attracted the wrong kind of woman, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, tell us what your first car was. We'd love yeah, to hear. Yeah, we'd love to hear what, uh, what you drove as your first car, yeah. If we're gonna do more of these auto museum tours that I love so much, we're gonna have to find a way to make it fun for Liz. <laughs>